Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. <sighs> All right, everyone. Grab your brushes and pay attention. Because Tex is going to blow your mind and teach you how to quickly paint that junked up telecommunications company, Comstar. And their outcast weirdo tech worshipping cousins, the word of Blake. Start by... Hey everyone, B1B Flyer here. I'm going to show you how to paint white using Citadel contrast paints. I've got their apothecary white bottle here. Make sure you shake that up real well. I've also primed my miniature using Krylon Fusion for plastic, but anything that you can get a nice glossy finish should work, including GW's own line of primers. When the contrast paints first came out, a lot of people had issues with this color turning things gray. In order to counter that, if you paint your miniature with an ivory or light cream color, the warmth from that will counter the cool gray that the paint applies. Painting the ivory isn't necessary if you use the bone color primer that GW sells, but this is just a step that if you don't have that available to you or you don't want to spend the extra money for the paint can, you can solve the problem simply by applying this light coat of ivory. I've got my paint, I've thinned it with some water, and we're going to end up applying two thin coats over the entire miniature. You want to make sure that you get everything com completely coated, otherwise you'll have some spots that'll look a little bit off, almost like a splotchy gray area. Take your time, let each coat dry completely between sessions, and when you're done, just double check and make sure you don't have any spots that you've missed. Now that everything's dry, I'm ready for the contrast paint. I've shaken this up quite a bit. I want to make sure all the sediment at the bottom is, is distributed throughout the paint bottle. I've also got a number three synthetic brush that I purchased from a hobby store, a Hobby Lobby or anything like that. You don't need a high quality brush. In fact, synthetic is better just because you can clean it more thoroughly when you're done with a harsher chemical like alcohol to help you not wear out your brushes. Put a fair amount of paint on your brush and go to work. I like to start from top to bottom because gravity will pull the paint downward and it just allows me to minimize the pooling and going back and forth over the miniature. I am painting every single area I want to forcefully push the paint into the cracks and the hard to reach areas, it won't just naturally flow. And since I want all the actual surfaces covered as well, I don't want to just rely on capillary action to take all of that throughout the miniature. I want an entire surface to try to keep it as smooth as possible. Be thorough and work with the paint that's already on the miniature to help minimize the amount of pooling that you'll have to come back and touch up later. I'll just randomly stop and check the miniature and dip the tip of my brush into an area where it's already pooled up and work that paint onto a different area that hasn't had any paint applied yet. Just as you would with a wash, you're going to want to make sure that you don't have areas that are pooling up. So about halfway through, I like to stop and inspect the miniature, see how it's doing, and if I need to just pull some more paint downward or add more paint potentially, I'm going to do that at this step. That way I don't have the entire miniature covered and then maybe the top part is drying before I finish the feet or some other area. Just have a paper towel handy to wipe away any excess. You can also use some more paint on an area that might have dried before you caught it and gently apply it and reactivate the paint. You can't do this for very long though, so it is important that you make sure to check and look over the miniature, like I said, immediately after you're done to make sure that you don't have areas that have paint resting or coffee staining or pooling up in an area that you don't want. Particularly the flat surfaces, any little areas maybe that you don't want as dark. If this paint settles and dries, it is a pigment and it will dry with a noticeable tint. So the paint does pull back from the edges and it does have a nice tendency to get those, those shades. But if you don't want so much of a darker color in that particular area, especially with the white, you do need to pay extra special attention to this. Continue to work. Make sure you get all the areas again double check at the very end to make sure that you haven't missed any areas either particularly the undersides uh, it's very easy to miss I've done it several times and once you've got that all coated let it dry completely for at least 45 minutes to an hour contrast paint is pretty thin so before you go applying anything else over the top of it you want to make sure it's dry because it will lift or potentially damage the surface that you're trying to keep in good condition don't forget to clean your brush when you're done with the contrast paint you don't want it to dry on the bristles, especially up in the ferrule. It's, for some reason, is very prone to ruining a brush if you don't take care of that quickly. I like to use either dish soap, I have brush cleaning soap as well. Really any kind of soap, especially on a synthetic brush, will be okay. Uh, even isopropyl alcohol.
but use whatever you have. Make sure you clean your brush and maybe it'll, so you can get some use out of it for multiple miniatures. The added benefit of not using a pure white as our base coat is that now we can use a white to dry brush or highlight the color that we already have. The ivory isn't a true white, so now that we've got this off-white here, you can use a regular white, whatever you have available to you. We're going to dry brush and hit all those high edges. I've got a fairly large dry brush and I've loaded up with paint and wiped it off on my paper towel and I'm gently trying to cover the edges from a top-down angle wherever possible, just trying to catch the corners and right angles as much as possible. You'll start to see how it does break out a little bit. I know with the light here it does wash out quite a bit. Unfortunately that's just a difficult uh, color to video, but as you work, you'll start to notice that you'll be able to see a gradient between the ivory, the gray, as well as the outer edges that'll start to look more white. Do this to your liking, and once you're done, you can start adding details. I've got a charcoal gray, you can use black. I've also got a gunmetal, a steel, a silver, whatever you prefer. And I'm just gonna pick out different areas that I wanna have a little bit of extra detail in to help set the miniature off. So I'm looking at doing joints, antennas, barrels, little boots or uh, dust covers over leg areas or hip joints, things like that. Take your time. I'm using a small detail brush. I keep the paint kind of thin because the darker color will cover more easily, especially over white. Take your time because it is difficult to repair the white finish the way that you would have made it with the contrast paint. That's not to say that you shouldn't try, uh, but if you have a brush, maybe a secondary brush that you've got that you can just use to help break up that spilled area and then remove most of it with some water and a paper towel. If you do have a mistake that gets away from you, just let it dry completely and then cover it up with the ivory and then the white and do your best. It shouldn't stand out too much from the rest of the paint. Make sure you let that dry completely and then we'll be ready to apply a wash. I'll be using Army Painter's Dark Tone, but Nuln Oil or any other black wash that you like to use is just fine. It's just going to be going over the metallic areas and any of the darker gray or black areas if you chose to not use a pure black. Get a little bit on your brush and go over the metallic areas and pick out the details once again. It's okay to let it go onto the outside of the edge of the painted areas. You actually kind of want that to help blur the line or, or blend the line between the two, especially since it's a white and a darker color. You want to make sure to take your time, cover the entire area. If you have a mistake, wipe it away and then come back to it when it's dry. If you want to do more than one coat, you're more than welcome to. If you want to darken it, you can also consider using a colored wash, for instance, on like a silver. You can use a reddish brown to get a bit of a bronze metallic effect without actually applying the bronze, if that's something you'd like to try but here I'm just using the black to add the nice shadowed areas and the appearance of depth. Lastly, if you really want, you can take this wash and put it over just the actual white paint to make it a little bit more gray. I end up doing this later on uh, over some areas on the upper leg. I don't show the step here, but you'll see it in the final picture. To be more efficient, while those wash areas are drying, I started working on the base. I applied a color of chocolate brown or any dark brown will be fine. Once that was dry, I started to put a sepia ink over the top of it. Again, a dark brown wash would be fine. And then I've got a desert yellow or a lighter brown color that I'm going to dry brush over the washed areas once it's completely dry. Between waiting for those washes to dry, I detailed the cockpit and a few little stripes to the antenna and other various details. Decals were added as well. And as you can see, we've achieved a pretty good white for the amount of work involved. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Follow us on Facebook. Give us a like, subscribe, and a text in the Black Pants Legion. Great channel. Thanks a lot. I hope you guys didn't mind me using a little bit of inspiration to have some fun at the beginning. We'll see you all next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.